So for this piñata cake, these are gonna be the necessities that you may need. Um, so I'll be using this 27 inch sphere and it comes in two pieces. Uh, I'll put the link below with all of the items that I used, but um, this will be our mold for our piñata cake. I also got these meltables at Michael's. Uh, they're 12 ounce um, light pink, but they come in many colors. And then for the drum, I'll be using this 10 by 14 inch. Um, I call them drums, but I don't know what they're called. Rectangle kickboards. There you go. And man, everything's slipping apart. Also, I have a ribbon that I'll be using to cover the seam. And then two six inch cakes. I'll be using a peach cake that I made from scratch and I'll, again, I'll include the recipe link below, but let's get started. Okay, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I'll be using two bags of 12 ounces of melting chocolate. And one bag, I um, warmed it up for 35 seconds, mixed it, and then I microwaved it again for an additional, for an additional 35 seconds. And that has really completely melted the melting chocolate. And I'm using this big spoon. I, I feel like it's a lot easier to spread out inside the mold. Um, I've seen other people that just dump the whole thing in here and then they kind of move it around. So that works too, but you want to try to eliminate as much of these um, empty spaces as possible. And we'll be doing two layers, two layers for each mold. So that's why I said you'll be needing two bags of 12 ounce. And I feel like these melting chocolates are a lot more forgiving than um, chocolate itself. Now, you can dye the melting chocolate yourself if you want, or I keep calling them melting chocolates, but they're meltables, like me melting candy. Um, you can dye them yourself, but I've just had the experience before where it tends to seize up and it gets kind of lumpy if you add any additional uh, food coloring to them. So I prefer, if, if possible, to buy them already pre-dyed. But if you have no other choice, um, if it does seize up on you, you can try adding two teaspoons of vegetable shortening for every 12 ounce. And if you have six ounces, then that'll just be one teaspoon. Math, I know, right? Mm -hmm. So I am just about done with this. And then you can pop them in the fridge um, I'll probably be popping them in the fridge for, I don't know, maybe a good 20 minutes just to be on the safe side, and then I'll be ready for the second coat. But I'm trying to make it as even as possible, but honestly, the most important part that you might want it to be a lot thicker is up here at the top of the rim, just because um, that's where you're going to be breaking it off of, of the mold. So make sure the top here in the rim is as thick as you can make it and the nice thing about this mold that i really love is that because it is clear i can like shine it up against the light and see where the all the empty spaces are and where i might need a thicker coat of chocolate candy melting candy all right so on to the second coat this time i actually did leave a little bit of chocolate behind like a handful of it just in case if i need to like glue something down or repair something, but basically second layer, same process. All right, so here are the molds and I'm gonna try to get rid of any access that might be stuck at the top here because I think it'll be easier for it to pop off without these little nubs holding it down and this is what makes me super nervous not not this part but like popping it out of the mold because I am very impatient all right so I'm so nervous <laughs> okay let's start with this one so I don't know how to do this like I think I'm just gonna apply pressure to the rim the outer rim all the way around and at the same time I'm applying pressure down here and up here in both places oh man 
So I don't know if you guys can see, probably not, but it looks like it's peeling away from the top. I guess let's flip it this way. And I'm gonna have my arm here to catch it when it does decide to pop out. Whoa, that is freaking cool. So there it goes. And uh, okay, what do I do, what do I do? <laughs> let's place it in a bowl. And I'll hold it there. Ta-da! And I'll stick it in the fridge. All right, let's try the second one. The second one is different because it's flat at the bottom and it has a little tabby tab. Um, so I'm hoping it's gonna be just as easy as the first one, <laughs> but you never know. So we'll do the same process. Man, not gonna lie, this bottom part was a pain in the butt to get out, but. Here we have it. Whoops, there we go. All right, so let's start with the bottom mold. Funny enough, this is my first time making this also, so I'm learning with you guys. <laughs> so if I make any mistakes, then I guess we'll learn together. Anyhow, so I have just a tad little bit of melted chocolate left in my bowl. So I'm gonna scrape it and I'm gonna add it to our cake board. What's bothering me is that this board is like a little bent. So I'm hoping that's going to flatten out once I add the weight. Ain't that part? No, I'm not too worried yet about um, cleaning up these edges because once I place the other bowl, the other half of the sphere on top, my plan is that they'll fuse together and I can, it'll just fix itself. Um, so, hoping that'll stay. And then I'm gonna start filling it up. Okay, time to start leveling out the cakes to get make sure that we have a flat surface on the top so it doesn't bend or do anything funky. Cake one. Turn that baby around. Oh, yeah, it's way low. Too low. All right, so now that we have that ready, it's time to get our frostings ready. And I have this cream cheese frosting that I made. I'm gonna be using this as my filling. And I like to use a cup. And this is the baggie. I actually already cut the top off, but it's a triangle um, ending that it has. And I have my tip. Since I know that I won't be switching out um, my tips, I'm just gonna be using this and slip it right in, push it through, there we go. And now I'm gonna fold it over the cup and for me it's just a lot cleaner to do it this way. I don't end up getting icing all the way down here and it just drives me nuts whenever that happens. So now we can shake it out of the cup. Shake it, shake it, shake it. And give it a twist and squeeze. All right, so that's ready. And I have my other frosting ready as well. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, so meanwhile, I had this in the fridge so that bottom part um, was able to harden. So now it's time to fill it up um, since we have like kind of like this empty space where the cake doesn't fit in. And honestly, I'm so nervous about this part just because I don't know if like it's gonna break. Like I haven't done this before. So like I said, we're learning with each other and to see if like hopefully the weight won't be too much of the cake. But this is a peach and whipping cream um, frosting and it's so good. Again, link in the description below. So I think that's enough. Ooh, so nervous. <laughs> Here goes nothing. Oh, okay. One down. I don't hear anything sketchy. Okay, now let's do our cream cheese filling. Oh my God, I'm so nervous about putting that top layer of the cake on. But I have to do it. I mean, I haven't seen others do it like this. And is there a reason why they don't do it like this? I don't know. 
I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. God, I'm such a nervous wreck right now. Okay, so now I'm gonna cover it with more of that peach frosting. I mean, so far so good, you guys. All right, and then I'm gonna cover it up with the rest of the whipping cream. Actually, you know what? I have leftover cream cheese, like a lot of the cream cheese frosting, so I changed my mind. I'm afraid to like apply pressure. Okay, so far so good. I mean, technically you guys could make it a lot prettier if you want on the inside. Um, but I think it's best if you put it together within the actual thing. I mean, I guess you could put it on the side, decorate it, and then try to... Yeah, I don't recommend that, but I mean... If any of you guys tried decorating cake on the outside and then stick it in here, I mean, I'd, I'd like to hear how that experiment turns out, but... I think it's best if you do it this way. But we're all learning together, aren't we? All right, so let's pop this in the fridge and then we're ready to try to assemble it all together. So I put the cake in the fridge to rest for about 30 minutes so it doesn't slip and slide. Um, and I'm gonna pipe with a 22 Wilton tip. Just a little something, because I feel like I need some love up here. But I'm gonna make these little rosettes, that's what you want to call it. And I mean, you can go crazy with like piping, but I squeeze in the middle and then I pull around. So squeeze in the middle, turn it, and pull. Squeeze, turn, pull. Squeeze, turn, and pull. Just looking a lot better, a lot less rugged. All right, so I'm one nervous wreck after one step after the other. So here's the cake, and then I stuck a plate, the flattest plate that I have, in the microwave for 45 seconds. And my plan is to put this half spear on top of the warm cake so it kind of melts the edges, and then I can come over here and fuse it together. Um, I have hot hands as it is, so I have to work really fast, and I'm really hoping this is going to work. So I think it'd be best if you pick a plate that's like big enough and flat enough for the diameter of your sphere. Uh, maybe a cookie sheet would work well too, which I didn't think about till now, but a cookie sheet is nice and flat and big. <sighs> All right, I'm so nervous, but let's wing it. That's kind of how it goes sometimes. All right, so hot hands. And the thing is sweaty since I just got it out of the fridge. What if I do this instead? What if I leave it where it is, in the bowl, kind of? So I'm trying to do it here so I don't have to, so I can hold it the least amount of possible. And then quickly bring it over here. Oh my God, it's slipping. Okay, I think that's gonna work. I mean, if I can do it, <laughs> you guys see what a mess I am, then you guys can definitely do it too. I think it fused. Okay, so you can see I have some spaces. God, that's so rugged. But nonetheless, don't fear, we got a ribbon. And the ribbon is like the contouring <laughs> of the sphere. Just cover it up. Got blemishes, it's all right. Just cover it up, nothing little makeup or a little ribbon can't do. All right, I'm gonna try to fill in the cracks here with the leftover chocolate that we had. What's that quote? Improvise, adapt, overcome. Okay, next up I'm gonna add my ribbon and I'm gonna tie the end with, um, not tie it, I'm gonna seal this back part with my glue gun um, so that way it stays. But see, contouring. All right, so for some of you, essentially you might be done. Um, you can get creative and add other things to it. For me, for example, my customer wants this topper 
which is really cute, but it's actually, I got a heavier one, so I recommend you probably getting a paper one, but what I have to do is I have to cut a hole, oh my god, as if it, I didn't, it wasn't nerve-wracking enough, um, I have to cut a hole so that it fits and like lays on top of um, the sphere. This is where I have to get creative, and I found a um, frosting tip um, that's the width of the stick, so I can run the stick through here so I know it's the appropriate width that I need. And I have a hot boiling uh, cup of water and I'm going to dip this frosting tip in the hot water so that it can heat up and hopefully it can help us make that hole that we need. So I think I want this right about here. So I made a little indentation there and I'm warming up my frosting tip. It's getting really, really hot. Shake off any excess water and let's press it into the ball. Success. All right. Yep. Yay. Ta-da. All right, and that's not it. Um, she also wants some flowers on the side. Usually I try to use natural flowers, but this color that she wanted is not in season. So I'm using artificial flowers um, and I used um, some shears to cut the plastic, but I'll be putting that over here on the side. All right, so same process. I am warming up my frosting tip, and this one's circular. And I think this will be a good spot right here. Oh, finally. Oop. Oh, a little chocolate fell inside. So now let's add our flowers like so and I don't need to glue it down or anything there we go how cute is that oh my gosh all right so she also wanted some pearls you can get as creative as you want with this but I'll add it here and I used some of that melting chocolate that I had saved. Goes one. Eh? What do you think? I'm gonna add some um, flowers at the bottom too. So I do have my glue gun handy. All right, so that's what we got. But let's go ahead and add some tissue paper. And I cut a slit so it kind of fits around. Oh, I think that looks kind of cute. I can glue that down like that. It adds a je ne sais quoi. Let's even it out and maybe put one in the back. I like this one because it has a little bit of gold accents to it. So let's add more flowers at the bottom. All right, so that's a wrap. So I hope you all learned a thing or two with me today. Thank you for joining me on my first time making a piñata cake, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.